Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday Night Night Cup. Unfortunately, this week there's no Emmy, so you'll just have to put up with me. I haven't done as much in the workshop this weekend as I would have liked, as I've been at Beamish Open Air Museum all weekend playing with a big B5 Fowler traction engine. Uh, I didn't really want to go, it was a struggle to have to go and play on an old vintage steam engine all weekend, but I managed to tear myself away, and that's basically what I've been doing. I won't be putting any video of that in this nightcap. I'll be doing a video through the week, probably Wednesday or Thursday it'll be done, showing the whole weekend. That's some real good footage if you're interested in the steam engines, uh, old motorbikes and old cars. Debs is doing great. Um, she actually had an interview for a job last week which went very well. Hopefully she'll hear about that this week. She's really looking forward to getting back to work and getting her life back to some sort of normality. So she is doing, she's doing okay. This is the control handle for the water injector, water regulator valve on Richard's steam wagon. What I need to do is make an adapter to go into the end of here, which will go onto a half inch square valve. So we've got a half inch square valve like that on the wagon. This goes down through the carb floor and sits on top of the valve. It's not fastened to the valve, it just drives on the half inch square. That's half inch square key steel. I've got some bits of stainless steel here. I'm going to fabricate the square out of that. So I'm just going to weld these together along that half inch square key steel and then I'll machine them up, make a sleeve for the end, drill it and tap it where our thread that is, probably Whitworth, and then we'll go and fit it onto the wagon. I'm going to make it out of stainless because I like working with stainless and it also it'll polish up, it'll look nice so it won't rust. The first thing I need to do is mark off what we're going to cut. I'm going to use one like that. One like that, I want you to say and then cut off and I'll end up with a, an outside corner joint, something like that, where I can put a nice run of TIG weld. I'll get these marked off. I'll just nip up that shop and I'll cut them off quickly with a slit and saw and then we'll go from there. Right, I've got some pieces cut up ready. So basically that's going to go like that. Then we'll have two sides on. Like that, and the top one. So we've got a nice half inch square down the centre. I'll set this up, clamp them, and then weld them with a TIG welder. And I'll try and get the camera in and get some nice close up shots of the TIG welding process. Yeah, I've got them clamped together and I've got a few tacks on them. This is the real reason why I want to TIG weld together. I've just received some Payrex TIG cups. Um, I've not used them before. I think it'll make Video and welds a lot easier. As I've said, I'm not a welder, I'm just a motor mechanic that pisses about. When I do a lot of welding videos for a company called Artec, I'm actually using an Artec welder at the minute. And I think having the Pyrex cup could make video and welding footage a lot easier. I'll take the centre foam out and I'll bring the camera in and try and get some decent arc shots of welding. That's a piece of square tube we welded up. I cut the end off on the hack so you can see the welds gone all the way through. I'm going to put it in the four door chuck, just face both ends, 
and then do a little bit of work with a manual with a manual miller machine just to clean out the square. It's hard shrunk very slightly when I when I welded it. I expected that to happen. Uh, so once dressing up with a file just to make it fit the half inch key steel again. going to be centered perfectly in the four jaw chuck because all we're doing is taking the face and cut of it a lot of times people forget that you can use a file for simple jobs like this it hasn't all got to be machine work after filing the square I've now got a nice fit on a bit of half inch key steel Nice slack fit, that's just what we need, a nice running fit. This needs to be 100mm long, so what I'm going to do is extend it in a piece of that tube, I simply weld that on, and then this end here needs a 12mm thread on, just screw it in the handle. That's 12mm, standard 12mm, so it's obviously not original. We'll face a piece of this off, measure it at length. And weld it on. This as well. It means you haven't got to worry about corrosion, you haven't got to paint this. I'm just going to weld a nut into the end of the tube. Well, it's complicating the job too much. the finished item. Like I say it's all made of stainless. Um, I made it basically because I wanted to, I needed to make one but I made it this way because I did want to try out those Pyrex welding cups and I must admit I'm quite impressed with them. Well I'm on the lathe there's a small tool I need to show you here. It's a tool that my friend Bob made. Bob's a lad that repairs the clock gauges. He's made a beautiful job of it. This is it's ordinary steel but it's been polished. Looks like it's been chrome but it hasn't. 
And the thing with Bob is he hasn't got a milling machine, so this is either done on a lathe or done by a file. So all these have been filed. I'll put it in the tail so the lathe and show you how it works. Bob's made this more simple too because that's what his lathe is. If we put an adapter in that goes into there. Into here you put a pin chuck. He's got a little grub screw there to lock the chuck in. So your pin chuck goes in there and your small drills. What I would call a carburetor jet drill, like a number drill, really small. Your lathe's run as fast as it can go with a small drill. And you simply move that like that to advance the drill. You get a lot of feel. You can feel what you're doing, you can feel how the drill is cutting. As you can appreciate, if you're drilling a hole with a drill the size of a hair, you wouldn't get very much feel using the tailstock hand wheel. But using that, you will. You get a close up there showing how the motion works. It's clever the way that it scrapes an arc down here. Like I say, he has been an absolutely beautiful job of it. There's no play at all in there. And it must have a good, at least an inch of travel. I had a letter come this week from uh, California from a gentleman called Norm Kane. What Norm sent us is a Zeus book. It's quite an old one, 1981-1982, a metric revision. Uh, these are handy, all the, they're full of information and all the information is obviously still relevant. One thing this one has got in is pitch circle diameters, which I can do, means I can, I can do pitch circles on the milling machine using the digital readout. I've always intended to do a video showing how you do that, so this book will help us to, to do that. So what's the purpose of those two screws, John? What's going to happen is when the, when the pattern comes out, that bit of sand's left in, like a self coring pattern, and all the screws do, they just bind to the sand to give it a bit of strength. They're actually, like the core of them gaggers, for some strange reason. Just to make the sand a little bit stronger, so it hopefully, it won't, it won't, it won't, the sand won't come out with the pattern, hopefully. Mm. And you saved that initial bit just so fine sand is yeah, just in to, contact with the pattern. That's right, yeah, just, just your initial bit just so it's saved and the rest sort of doesn't really matter. It's in pretty good condition anyway, but you do get little bits of little bits of brass and bits of aluminium that have come through. Right, so that sand can just be reused and reused. Yeah, you use it all. I mean, the more you use it actually the better it gets. <clears throat> all you do you put a little bit more bentonite clean with it. In water, that's just sand and water basically. Some people put cool dust in. As it gets burnt, it gets it gets finer and gets better to use. It's important when you ram it that you ram it hard enough so it doesn't fall to bits, but if you ram it too hard, the sand loses its natural porosity. So did you like making sand castles when you were a kid? I hated the bastard mate. alcohol mixed up with uh, graphite powder which is like skin dries and wool, hardens and wool up puts a nice finish on as well when cast it
I've held the, held the sand in. See, we've used that little bit of sand on the letter. So well, that's the sand burnt and stuck in there. Anyway, once again, it's just time to say thanks very much for watching, for subscribing and for clicking the like button. And as usual, a massive thanks for all the well wishes that have come in towards Deb and me dad and that are still coming in. Thanks very much.